What is up, guys? So Hills Kids, April 3, 30, we're talking about peace again. That's right, it's April, it's week 3, we're still talking about peace. Yeah, it's exciting. I hope you guys have been really enjoying this one. I love this series, so I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. So, this week we are talking about Isaac. Yeah, you know that guy, Isaac. <laughs> He's had his moments, his good moments, and his bad moments. But this week, we get to point out one of the coolest things he did. And that was love people well, even when they made it hard. Even when they didn't want to have peace, he chose to have peace. So we've got a really exciting lesson coming up for that. But first, we've got some games, some other things. So we're going to do a really cool game, and it's going to be like... So you're going to have to guess the natural wonder from space. So you're going to have like satellite image and it's going to slowly zoom in on somewhere and you have to guess the natural wonder. Is it the Grand Canyon? Is it Mount Everest? The Great Barrier Reef? Who knows, but you have to figure it out. So we're going to jump into that game and then we're going to jump into this lesson. So I will see you guys after that game.
That was a super fun game. I don't know how you guys did. Let me know if you got all five or not. It's pretty tricky, dude. You just never know until you're right up on it. And then... Anyways, I am excited about this lesson today. You see, we're talking about peace when it's hard. And so to, 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 to kick it off, to start it, I wanted to do a scenario in your head, okay? And everybody to close your eyes. Yep, I'm watching you. I can see through this screen. I'm watching you close them. All right, now imagine this. You're sitting in lunch. It's lunchtime. You've got your friends around you. Everyone's eating. And all of a sudden, the biggest, meanest kid in the whole school comes charging at you and throws a cup of pudding all over your clothes. Everyone's laughing. What's your first response? Are you getting up and getting angry? Are you going to throw pudding back? Are you going to yell, get mad, whatever? What is your response to the situation? Alright, now open your eyes. How'd you respond? What'd you do? What was your response? He threw pudding on you. That's not cool at all. You have to do the rest of the day covered in pudding now. But what if I told you you didn't know the whole story? You see, what if I told you somebody left their book bag a little too far out under the table? The big kid fell over the book bag and simply dropped the pudding cup and it splattered all over you. It was a total accident. He didn't mean to at all. He actually didn't want to bother you at all. He was just going to his seat. Yeah, you see, that changes our perspective. We want what's right. We want revenge, vengeance. We want to be even, to get what they deserve, right? But the Bible tells us that that's not what we should do. When we follow Jesus, we're called to lay down that, and we're called to have peace. We're called to love others, even if it may not look like they're being nice, or even if they're not being nice. So we've got a whole lesson on that that we're going to jump into in a minute. We've got Haley teaching us our memory verse. Let's jump into that and learn this first for this month because it's a great one. And I will see you guys after that. What is up, you guys? It's Haley, and I am back for the month of April with a brand new memory verse. So this month, we are going to be in Romans 14 19. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the brand new words and motions. So first line is, so let us do all we can to live in peace. So first motion. So let us. Do all we can to live, put up your houses, we're living in peace. So just bring your house from the top of your head to your chest, and then we're gonna close our hands together. All right, so next line is, and let us work hard to build up one another. So we're gonna push it together. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. All right, one more time. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Great job, you guys, bye. All right, guys, we've got a big chunk of Genesis to jump into for this week's lesson. I'm super excited about it. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 through 31. So if you guys want to flip open to your Bibles and read that, that would be awesome. But we're, let's talk about Genesis real quick, okay? Genesis is the first book in the Bible. And it's, it's significant for more than one thing. So you see, Genesis is the beginning. Genesis is, is pretty much leading up to, well, the rest of the story of the Bible. And most of the story of the Old Testament, especially if we read it, is, is about who? It's the Israelites. And Genesis is the beginning of those Israelites. You see, Genesis, the word, actually means beginning. So when we read this, we're reading about the beginning of these Israelites and, and what they're going to look like, what they're going to stand for. And so Isaac is, well, the second generation there. You see, God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. Abraham had Isaac. And so now we're following up with Isaac. The second, the second one in line, right? The second place after Abraham that's eventually going to lead to the entire nation of Israel being founded. And so Isaac has the same promise as Abraham 
that he's going to make a great nation and he's going to be the father of many, many kids. And so that's where we pick up. We're here and we're with Isaac and, well, let's just jump right in. You see, a severe famine now struck the land, as it happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. So we start out this story, and there's a famine. Now, if you don't know what a famine is, basically, there was either a drought, or insects, or natural disasters that, that caused crops not to grow. Things didn't go well for the farmers, and so crops didn't grow, which means people didn't have enough food. So, Isaac packs up his stuff, and he moves on. And so, verse number two, it says, The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Live here as a foreigner in the land, and I will be with you and bless you. And hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and to your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham your father. You see, there's a famine, and Isaac was moving around, and God said, Hey, stay right here. This is where your land is going to be. You stay here, and I will bless you. So, picking up in verse 4, it says, I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky. And I will give them all these lands, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my requests, requirements, commands, decrees, and instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. So Isaac listened. He obeyed. Great. Here's a little tip for you guys. God ever asked you to do something, obedience is key. So Isaac listened, he obeyed, and he stayed in Gerar. So he's under the Philistine king, um, and well, if you if you read history, the Philistines and the Israelites eventually don't get along too well, but they start out in a really cool way. But it gets a little rocky to start. Let's jump in to verses, ooh, we're jumping all the way down to number 12. And it says, when Isaac planted his crops that year, so he's in Gerar, He's planted his crops. It says, when Isaac planted his crops this year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. So remember, God said, if you stay here, I'm going to bless you. And he did. And he harvested a hundred times more than he planted. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. So like he is set. He harvested, I like imagine you, you plant one grain of, of wheat and you get a hundred. Now imagine that in huge fields, he's got so much wheat, he doesn't even know what to do with it. And then, here's what happens. Verse 15, it says, So the Philistines filled up Isaac's well with dirt. These are the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father Abraham. That's not cool. The Philistines got jealous. You see, Isaac started getting rich, he started making money, he started doing well. And the Philistines got jealous. And so they filled his well with dirt. And I want you guys to understand that wells back then were like life. You see, water wasn't exactly everywhere. It's not like today. They didn't just have sinks with water. They got all their water from these wells. So the Philistines filled their wells with water. So they had to leave. They had to move. And so, verse 16, finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said. For you have become too powerful for us. You see, they were scared. Isaac had started making money. He started making friends. People really liked him. And all of a sudden, the king of the Philistines said, You gotta get out of here. We can't take you. You might be uh, too popular, too cool. You might try and do something crazy, like overthrow our kingdom. So, Isaac moved out. Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley, where he set up tents and settled down. You see, he listened. Without a fight, Without a, a big deal, he didn't stomp, he didn't leave trash everywhere when he when he moved away. He just left. He didn't seek revenge. Alright, so we're going to jump down to verse 20 now. And it says, But then the shepherd from Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said. And they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Essek, which means argument. So he moves away. He moves to a new land. He starts his herds and his, his crops again, and then the same people that filled up their well, right? The same people that ordered him to leave came over and started arguing about the spring. And they said, this is ours. You can't have it. So they dug new wells, 
They got new water. And the people at Garar said it was theirs. I would be mad then. I'd be like, no, you told me to move. I moved. This is my place now. But, moving into verse 22, it says, Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time, there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to proper prosper in this land. So Isaac moved a third time. He moved once, twice, and a third time. And this time, the people in Gerar were okay with it. They said, all right, you're far enough away. We're not going to make a big fuss about it this time. You're all good. But, let's see what happens. Show me in the verse 28, it says, they replied, and this is Abimelech. Abimelech replied, we could see plainly that the Lord is with you. So we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. Let us make a covenant. Swear that you will not harm us, just as we have never troubled you. We have always treated you well, and we sent you away from us in peace. And now look how the Lord has blessed you. So Abimelech wants to make a peace treaty with Isaac. That's all cool and well. But most of what Abimelech said wasn't true. He said, we have always treated you well. He said, we've never troubled you. But they filled up his wells. They ran him out of the country, not once, but twice. They weren't, they were lying. They said, we treated you so nicely, but they hadn't. But here's the thing. Isaac still sought peace. If we look at 30 and 31, it says, so Isaac prepared a covenant feast to celebrate the treaty. They ate and drank together. Early the next morning, they each took a solemn oath not to interfere with each other. And Isaac sent them home again, and they left him in peace. Isaac chose peace. And it turned out to go great for Isaac. So we've got a song that's actually about peace. It's a new song. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's fun, interactive. So you guys jump in with this, and then we're going to wrap it up today. So I'll see you after the song. Think that's a really cool story guys you see isaac's willingness to walk away made a huge difference he didn't make enemies he didn't cause trouble he didn't want to get revenge and what ended up happening was he had peace even if the people started it right they started it and then they kept going and they kept going but isaac continued to have peace Isaac continued to show peace, and I think that's huge, guys. 
You see, we're going to have people in our lives who want to start trouble, who want to make a deal, who want you to react. They want you to do something. But God calls us to a different standard. He tells us that we are people of peace. We are called to have peace with everyone, even if they don't want to have peace with us. So how can we have peace? What can we do? The question for this week, guys, is, is when should you walk away from the fight? When should you step back? When should you take a break, take a breather, step away from everything and let it cool down? Because the, th the reality is we want to get in fights. We like to get in fights. It's easy to see Isaac do it because, he, I mean, he's, just, he's in the Bible, of course. But for us, that's hard. And there's definitely truth to that. It's hard. But we can walk away. We can pray to Jesus for help. We can ask others for help. But we don't always have to cause trouble. You see, when we want peace, we have to act. And sometimes the best action is nothing at all. Like Isaac did. He just moved away. He simply walked away. And I'm sure we've found ourselves in those situations before. Where we should have walked away. We should have done something different. And it didn't end well for us. So I want to... Just challenge you guys. Think about this week. Think about the issues, your siblings, parents, friends at school, whoever it is that makes you want to, you know, and think how you can have peace this week. How can you walk away? I love this lesson because it's so practical, guys. We can have peace. It might be as easy as just walking away. So I want to challenge you guys to do that. Step away. Take a break. Take a breath and try again. You guys are awesome. I will see you guys next week for the last week of April. What is happening to April? It's going away. Eww. Anyways, I will see you guys next week. Later.